Okay, good evening. I think this is number three, right? This is our third yeah. catch up. So this is our third week on the trot. So I do not need to introduce the gorgeous Maxine from up in the middle of the country or the gorgeous Donna, <laughs> who is our Essex girl. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure I've ever dropped that one in before. Um, right. and I know we're just having a laugh offline because we're twinning. <laughs> we're literally twinning today, which is really cute. And no, we are not sponsored by these people. So you don't yeah. you need to go there. This is not a pitch. You do not need to go <laughs> buy these jumpers to be in our gang. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> How's the week been, ladies? <gasps> no, it's Wednesday <laughs> already. And where did that go? Where's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday gone? First of all, um, the madness continues outside. <laughs> you know, we could go buy we could go buy a pasty from Greg's, but do not sit in the park and eat it because that will be considered a picnic. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Don't you dare go running to burn off the calories because. <sighs> Oh, no, 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 no. no. It's not allowed, started. is it? It's just not allowed. <laughs> Don't even think about going to a gym. Oh, oh, oh. Or, or expect a toilet to be open in the supermarket because, you know, you can walk around the supermarket because apparently it can't get you there. But if you visit the toilet, it will get you in there. Is that, are you serious? <laughs> are you yeah, serious? you can't I went, the in, I went into the toilet in Tesco's in um, Sheffield at the weekend. Well, you would. <laughs> where you are. <laughs> I think it depends where you are. It's a bit of a postcode lottery at the moment. And you're allowed to go to the toilet while shopping. Well, what's quite interesting in the way that Max went, well, you would, actually <laughs> sums up what happened on Saturday, right? Because Saturday, I am sure I walked past a crowd of about 50 people and just walked to take this to I'm, I'm, Of course. The more I think about it, the more certain I am. My, my um, friend, when I was doing Sunday service, she went, mm, you missed something really important when you were talking to people. And you forgot to tell them that we were only in the shop about three minutes. We went for a wee, we picked up a bottle of water, we picked up a juice, and we picked up some of these hand warmers, which were all at the front of the store. We didn't need to go anywhere. And we were in there about three minutes. And literally when we walked out, there was about 50, 60 people in the queue. So to your point, Maxine, I think you might be right. <laughs> <laughs> they heard you were in Sheffield. They heard you they were in Sheffield. They shout you and they say, go to the loo, try all the doors. Do not let her not be able to go for a wee. Yeah. No. Otherwise there will be trouble. <laughs> no. <laughs> and how's everything in the world of Maxine this week, babe? It's been a week since Oh, yes, all, all tickety-boo. Tickety-boo? Uh, nothing really interesting to report, actually. Yeah, uh, that's unusual. Anything exciting? I've just been nice to people. <gasps> oh, wow. You're always nice. Constantly. Actually. And people come in and they say, I've been to this other post office and they're horrible there. I said, well, to them, it's a job. They get paid to do parcels all day. I because where mine's in a shop, I get different people coming in. So when they come in, I ask them how they are and what they're doing. And I always have to ask, for the purpose of safety, can you tell me what's in your parcel? They're not gonna say, are they? Well, it's drugs. Um and Boris Johnson's head, is it? <laughs> so, you know, I ask them and they're all they'll say, the best one they say is it's a present. <laughs> right but I asked for the purpose of safety so once I did have a guy say you don't want to know what's in there I said oh god right well I've got to ask now <laughs> and it was two sex toys for his ex-wife <laughs> yeah and for I said ex-wife yeah because we have to ask okay. are there any batteries in there and are they attached <laughs> to the device <laughs> and I didn't even get to that and all I said to him was uh any batteries anything electrical because I have to put a sticker on he said you don't want to know and then I said, well, you're going to have to tell me. He said, well, it's two sex toys for the ex-wife. The bigger, the better, because I hate her. I said, right, well, thank you. My ex-husband doesn't send me that. Right, at this <laughs> point, at this point, any of you, please share this video viral. Let's find that man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have seen him since. I, I have seen her. him since. <laughs> yeah. It's my post lady. <laughs> yeah. He's going to come in tomorrow now, isn't he? And she and she's telling everyone about my, my ex-wife's toy. Brilliant. <laughs> and I have actually got his, uh, his postcode and house number because you have to write that on the back of the package. And he hadn't written on, so I said, could I take your postcode and house number? He said, I'm not sending any to you. I said, no, it's all right, love. But I just need to write it on for uh, 
security purposes. You knew something was wrong, Max, when it started moving across the counter. Well, that's why we have to ask if there's batteries, because if it starts whizzing around in the bag when I've sealed it up, I've got to undo the bag, haven't I? The postman comes in and says, what's happening? It's not me. Honestly, it's the bag. It's not my gift, I promise. Yeah. Yes, not mine. Yeah. I'm not paying my myself. <laughs> oh, we have crazy people coming oh, up. Oh, we started, didn't we? We've started okay. already. Um, yeah. I'll be honest, when we started this chat today, I did not realise we were going to talk about sex toys. But now we're No, <laughs> but you did say, no. let's talk about healing. And I think there's <laughs> healing properties in that. I do agree. <laughs> I, I do, ch- I honestly, honestly uh, agree that orgasms are very good for the health. And yeah. most of you know this because Donna, obviously you're involved in every Self Love Club membership chat that I do. And Maxine, <laughs> what she was going to say this. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I was like, I was nervously because I'm Donna, the bottle of my water. You're <laughs> an expert in orgasms. What, what, what's more, what's Poor more old Barry. What's more interesting though is how many how many of my old people that I used to work with said to me that self love club is about masturbation and I'm literally yeah. just allowing. <laughs> Sorry, Donna, I nearly got her to spit. <laughs> She's knocked her teeth out now. <laughs> when she receives the parcel. <laughs> And this was going to be a serious chat. I warned you. I just knew it was going to go off on the right. Yeah, hang on a minute. At no point did we say it was going to be serious. No, uh, never. I, I said we need to bring the light to it. However, I've taken a lot of Yeah, time. in the first two minutes. Subject. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How oh, dear. Breathe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm not going to drink my water. I absolutely stand by what I say. An orgasm a day is extremely important for the health. Yeah. And as we're yeah. going to be talking about healing, I think it's very important to talk about health. Yeah. So from my perspective, there will probably be a lot of men out there going, yes, I can just show my wife <laughs> this video. Yes. What I post office do. does she work at? <laughs> I can see it tomorrow. They'll be queuing out the door. They were queuing outside the house last week. It's the post office tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and Tesco's toilets now. No, that we say, don't tell her what's in your parcel. Don't tell her yeah. what's in your parcel. Let her guess. Go be there all day. <laughs> Honestly, when I go to the post office tomorrow, because I've got a load of affirmation cards to post out, um, because I couldn't get out of the house again today. You're going to have to bolt them up. I'm literally going to be like, I promise you it's not a sex toy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when he asks, because it's across our screen, we have to say, for the purpose of safety, can you tell me what's in your past? And when he doesn't ask yeah. you, say, are you not going to ask me that question at the top of your screen? Because we have to have it stuck on. Yeah. Oh. So if you've got something you normally ask and then start saying, guess what it is? Guess what it is? <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Honestly, when I go back... To that was on post- full speed, by the way. <laughs> when I go to my post office back home, I am so going to say that to him because I've got a really good relationship with him up here. I don't think it's. I don't think it's my place. Just. Oh, no, I don't know. If you don't know, it's even better. <laughs> video it though. You must video it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I will do. He's brilliant. My my post office back where I live is just amazing. He's so fun. He was t- talking to me about the um, COVID vaccine that he had. He's actually a paramedic, and uh, no. so he's part time paramedic and part time helps out in the post office. And he'd had this vaccination, and he was like, "Lucy, I feel so weird. I just feel so weird." And I was like. Are you sure you want to be having this conversation with me, mate? <laughs> yeah, not a good, not a good thing. You know, I'm no. the only one that walks in there with no. Never mark. tell Lucy you feel weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. And on that note, let's talk about healing, shall we? Yeah. yeah. Shall we? <laughs> let's get off the sex chat. And I apologise if none of you have had. In fact, in the description, I'm going to put. Please do not let ch- children listen to the first 14 minutes of our conversation. Yeah. No. Yes, of course. Because it's not after nine o'clock. No, indeed. No, we don't want them going through the mum's drawer, do we? No. <laughs> Mum! <laughs> Let's not give them ideas, Max. No. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. So... Warning! Yeah. Warning. I think these, these need to come with a warning light from Yeah. Now. Well, maybe what I should do is just put them out at nine o'clock in the evening after the watershed so we don't need to worry about it. <laughs> we usually behave ourselves. Sorry. <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't. No, you're right. Let's not tell Fitz. No. <laughs> yeah. Imagine when we get together, we're even worse. Yes. Oh, oh my God, goodness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is just constant when we get together. Yeah. 
and then Lucy will bring it back in and go, no, nah, I won't bother. Yeah, I, bring, I bring it back in for a level of seriousness for about three seconds and then my yeah. mum's in the air or something and everyone's like, that's it, yeah. Then, yeah. Away we go. Well, let's do this, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so a lot of my followers recently and a lot of my subscribers have been saying to me, Lucy, please, can you do some sessions on healing? Like, I really want to know how and whatever. Now, I'm not going to go into the how tonight because I, what I would really like to do is I would like to um, actually open the floor to you ladies because the reason we came together was around healing, right? Let's be honest about it. Um, Donna, you got brought to one of my seminars in London. You were, you know, having a hell of a time with the menopause. You met me and you were, you explained to me about all of your menopause issues, which I'll let you explain, but you know, Donna's gone a really, really amazing, um, on amazing journey to heal that. And by default of Donna meeting me, I helped Donna set up a group to help other ladies. Um, and that's called the madness that is the menopause. Just for any of you that aren't banned from Facebook, please go join that group of it of you. <laughs> um, and that's how Maxine connected with Donna because Donna was educating the ladies on the stuff that I had educated her on and she was sharing her wisdom forwards. And it's really interesting and important when you know what you're doing and when you are in a place where you're like, actually, I've done a really good job here, I've healed, I've leveled up, I think the most important thing that you can do is share it forwards. You know? And that is yeah. how we've been brought together. So Donna, I would, I would really, really love to hear from you first, then we'll go over to Max. Can you just <laughs> like give us an idea of where you were with your menopause journey? Because um, we won't talk about healing. We'll talk about how bad it was because I know your journey was yeah. particularly um, outrageous. Yes, it, it wasn't fun. I have to say it wasn't fun. Um, so where I was when I met you, Luce, was I was working in a job that I actually loved but couldn't do to the best of my ability because my brain fog was so bad that most days I couldn't remember what I was supposed to be talking about. I was in charge of a team um, of quite young young people um I was constantly red in the face from the flushes they were literally coming every half an hour throughout the day um I didn't get much relief from them from them if I'm honest um brain fog was awful um this is just work I'll I'll talk about how bad things were at home as well but so I was in that space of um really feeling not good on myself at all I didn't like myself very much. I certainly didn't love myself. Um, I knew I was being, uh, I knew that I was snapping and not being very nice. And I didn't like that because I've always been a pretty nice person. And to turn into this, what I saw to be a bit of a monster, <laughs> for want of a better word, um, was not a nice feeling. Now, that's at work. But then when you look at the home process as well, what was going on there is um, my relationship with my husband was in tatters, to be fair, you know. Um, bless him I think he was frightened to breathe let alone anything else you know let alone speak well he couldn't eat a um, yogurt let's he couldn't eat a yogurt let's indeed you know I'd forgotten right about now. that let's yeah he deserves that, a lot of love he does he deserves a lot of love and he's getting a lot of love now bless him um but um yeah he couldn't eat a yogurt next to me because I wanted to smash it in his face bless him when he was scraping the yogurt pot out you know bless his heart and my relationships with my um with my youngest daughter that lived with us was also struggling because I just wasn't nice to be around you know but on top of that I was very controlling with my younger daughter and didn't even know it I didn't know I was doing it you know because none of us want to do that if we're aware of it but I didn't know it at all so that was what was going on I was in a really awful place I wasn't in a good place and over the years Donna when you were younger um, obviously pre peri and menopause did you have any health issues? No, not really, no. I mean, well, actually I say no. Yeah, my gut health wasn't great if I'm looking back, but you know these things, you accept it, don't you? You accept it as normal because you're getting a bit older and, oh, I'm going to have little problems with my tummy because I'm getting older. And, and actually that's not true. You don't need to. So I didn't have great gut health. I had really bad acid reflux um, to the point that... Um, I was taken in hospital twice for a suspected heart attack because the pain I was having was, you know, the symptoms I was having was like a heart attack. Um, and I was in a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort. Um, so my health wasn't great. It wasn't amazing with the gut health, but everything else was fine. Yeah. And then obviously Perry kicked in and 
Yeah, it's just before we hand over to Maxine, I think what you've just said is really, really important and I'd like to highlight it. We have normalized autoimmune disease. We have normalized yeah. gut health issues. And don't get me wrong, it's great that we're talking about it now, but it's mm-hmm. not normal to no. have any of these issues with your gut or with no. your um, hormones or anything. And I just want to put that out there. I would really like to just raise the levels of consciousness that we've got around the planet right now that it is not normal that you don't go to the toilet every day. No. It's not normal that your hormones, you know, you come out in massive amounts of spots and things like that. And I just want to raise that because there are a lot of people that I engage with and a lot of people are reaching out to me, as you know, for one-to-ones at the moment because their health is struggling. Mm. Now, before we hand over to the beautiful Maxine to hear where her health journey was, I truly believe, and I stand by this, I've been talking about this for many, many years now, every single issue that surfaces in our body is actually a direct impact of emotional trauma that we've experienced in our life, okay? And I just... Like, I just want to throw that out there now so that when we start coming to the other side of listening to Max and we talk about how things have evolved for you ladies, that I can happily loop that back in because I think it's really important. So we've got Donna with hormonal issues and and gut issues, okay? I obviously, most of my followers, most of my listeners know I had underactive thyroid, massive hormone issues with my womb um, and, you know, just all of that, that balancing out chronic digestive issues recurring sickness and um i put it down to the underactive thyroid that i have that my hair was constantly falling out as well mm-hmm. you know i i suffered the typical spots on the chin around hormone time but my hair was massively falling out like um you know my ex-partner would tell you i used to have so much hair compared to what i've got now it's 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 very 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 interesting so you know, I think we just we just need to touch on that. And then I'm going to loop back to that a little bit later as we mm. go through. So, Max, when you met Donna, the beautiful blonde bombshell that she was back then, because she's a little <laughs> bit more brunette these yeah. days, but she, she was beautiful blonde. In fact, let me be honest with you. When I, I met blonde. Donna, Donna had peroxide blonde hair and her skin looked grey. That's the Donna that I met. Um, and it wasn't that she wasn't vibrant because whenever I saw her in the office, I was like, that woman's got great energy. Like I really resonated mm-hmm. with it, but she was gray to the skin and her hair was so peroxide. And Don, you must have lost what, five, six, seven kilos, something like that. Yeah, Is easily. Yeah. 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 So, you know, like we'll obviously talk about how Don has managed to achieve that, but it's been a huge journey for you. And we met in 2016, 15, 16. Think sixteen, I yeah. think. Max, I think. is that right? <laughs> Max, Max, I was waiting no. for that. <laughs> so it was the beginning of two thousand and seventeen, unless you had the event before then, because you started the madness in two thousand and seventeen. Because it's four years this year. Yes, yeah, so you're you right. It is two thousand and sixteen. You definitely yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It was the end of the year, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay, cool. Thank you for clarifying our dates, Miss Stalker. <laughs> That's fine, my love. So, so over to you, babe. What, um, how was your health when you met Donna? Obviously, you were struggling with the menopause because you were in her group and you were looking for some help. So explain to, to me where you are or were. So I'd had digestive issues all my life. So um, my periods were horrendously heavy. Um, they put me on the pill. That didn't help. Um, and then I had a miscarriage and they wanted to give me a hysterectomy, uh, which I didn't have. I just didn't go back for any of the appointments because in my head, I knew I was going to have children. So I didn't bother going back for any appointments. They just kept writing to me. I just kept putting them in the bin, but I always had a problem with my gut. So, um, I went to the doctors once with so much pain. She said, you've got a stomach ulcer. We'll get the tube down your throat and have a look. Turns out I had got an ulcer. So they put me on these horrendous tablets, which made the pain twice as bad. Um, Were they then, I found, then I found a health doctor who only prescribed plants and herbs. Maxine, and just, before, yeah. Maxine just before you go on, were the tablets that you were prescribed for your stomach a Meprazole? Do you remember? I can't remember. They were big pink things. Yeah, okay. Huge pink things. Yeah, okay. 
yeah. So then I found this health doctor at the local clinic um, who only did plants and herbs. And she was called the witch doctor. But I thought, right, well, I'm going in here. I'm going to go and see what she's up to. Because I was a bit nosy. Um, and she was talking about these plants and herbs instead of taking these awful tablets. And I said, look, I'm in so much pain with this stomach ulcer. And all they keep saying is, oh, well, it's painful because it's shrinking, which I thought was the biggest load of crap I've ever heard. And I'm not one to listen to a GP. I haven't listened to a GP for years. But because I was in so much pain, I thought these tablets would help. Um, anyway, I went on her plant things, which was uh, something in water in the morning. I could pop a little white pill underneath my tongue, which was purely just plants. And within a week, the pain went wow. completely. So I went back to see her because she's given me quite a few. And she said, now you need to look at your diet because obviously something irritating your gut. But at the time I was married, we were on a tight budget. So we had the same crap, basically. Um, but we used to go for Sunday dinner to my in-laws and it was a massive, good God, no wonder they're all huge. Um, it was like, you know, I, I could get in between all of them. They couldn't sit next to each other on the sofa because their legs would just spill out all over the place. That's how big they were because they just ate food all day. So they used to do this massive dinner, which I, you know, I used to eat a little bit of it, but then my stomach would play up. So I had to go through what it was irritating me. So it was meat and dairy because they used to do mashed potatoes and put 14 chunks of butter in and three quarters of milk. Yeah. And they used to love it. And it used to make me feel sick. So I stopped doing that. Um, that just makes so then I realised it was dairy and meat that was doing yeah. it. So, but I still ate meat and I didn't have as, much, as many reactions, but the dairy was the worst and then obviously hit the menopause and I was on Facebook scrolling through like you do and Donna popped up as mummy rebel not as the menopause but I liked her face so I went <laughs> yeah, I'll send you a friend you. request and then I can't even remember I think you were going to work you just put something about going to work and you didn't want to go and I thought oh I like her yeah she'll be my friend and then the madness and then she asked me if I wanted to join the menopause group yeah um, and I didn't go straight away, but then she put a post on with all her symptoms. And it was about basically feeling fed up of being fed up. Yeah. You know, I want to wake up in the morning and feel great. I don't want to wake up and feel like this. Yeah. So that's when I realised it was the same woman. So I jumped and there was, I think there was eight of us when I jumped on. <laughs> um, and within a week, I think there was about 15. I think now we've got about 5,000. Uh, just have, yeah, nearly five, nearly five. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And then I watched, she, she actually messaged me and said, would you mind jumping on my live tonight? And I nearly had a heart attack on the spot. I went, I don't, I don't do lives. <laughs> she said, no, you can just watch me. But I thought she wanted me to take part in it. I thought, oh, I should, I should never have made friends with this woman. What's she doing? <laughs> She's a nutter. <laughs> but she used to do a live from her sofa, just about, um, well, it was things you'd change, wasn't it? Things you, you would eat. And I used to put recipes on for me so I could try different food. Because to me, fruits and veg were carrots, broccoli and cabbage. Yeah. And fruit was bananas and apples. So I couldn't make a meal out of that. Yeah. So then Donna introduced I me think. to all these other little things. <laughs> you could, yeah. And I'm sure we were when we're in Norfolk and wherever. Um, yeah. But yeah, so she shared recipes and so, like all the symptoms, she talked about them. So I learned loads from there. And then obviously we became best friends. But what's, so what's brought us together here is a commonality of our pain yeah mm. and basically what we've then gone on and shared but like you said the accepting the pain I had gut health all the time but I was told it was normal yeah 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 absolutely, absolutely. and it's that whole when Donna put on you know for the madness group um that she wanted to wake up feeling good I realized there's probably only one week in a month that I felt okay getting up in the morning the rest of the month I'd pray to go back to sleep I'd pray for a day off yeah I knew once I got to work, I'd feel okay because I was moving. Yeah. And that, as Donna pointed out, once you start moving every day from the minute you get up, your day starts earlier. Yeah. Instead of sitting slumped with four cups of coffee, yeah. you know, if you start just moving before, straight. So I learned it all from Donna. Just before we start going down that route, right, I just want to, I just want to pull it back because we've, we all have a common or we had a common issue of gut health issues right mm -hmm. now to anybody out there that is suffering with anything to do with digestion it's anger so yeah you have three angry birds sat here oh god yeah <laughs> oh yeah angry i was angry birds. i love that 
and okay this is this is you know for myself it's a very long time ago but that's that's how I have been able to impact as many people as I have because I identified that my anger my emotional trauma that was making me angry was showing up in my digestion obviously my wisdom I've passed it on to Donna because Donna it literally was and is around me constantly and she weaves that through her group so by yeah. default of me saying right enough is enough time out I'm going to heal I've now been able to impact Donna and Donna's been able to share with 5,000 people in her group which is freaking awesome you know so to anybody out there that has issues no matter what it is it could be skin it could be like psoriasis it could be um, you know, a hormone issue, it could be a gut issue, it could be, I don't know, brittle toenails and fingernails for all I know, like it could literally be anything. The, fir the first thing to recognize is that your physical vessel is speaking to you. It is definitely you. It is telling you, hey, I've got a problem. Woo, I've got a problem. Yeah. You know, if you come up in a big spot on your right cheek, there is a problem going on at like in your emotion somewhere. Okay, now obviously tonight I do not have the time to go through every single organ and what it means and how it looks. So I'm going to give some very, very high level tips. Um, and then I'm going to go back to Donna and Maxine just to share a little bit about what they did. Um, you know, obviously working, Donna working with me, what she did, what she took. And then obviously Maxine, what she's picked up from the group. So a couple of really, really basic things for everybody to know is your right hand side of your body is your masculine side of the body. OK, so predominantly, if anything happens on the right hand side of your body, it's masculine emotional trauma. OK, if it happens on the left hand side of your body, it is feminine emotional trauma. Sorry. So will you stop it? <laughs> I'm going to have to cut that bit. <laughs> I didn't hear. I did, we didn't hear it. <laughs> He's fucking roaring. <laughs> I didn't I'll hear. In. Maybe I'll leave it in. Maybe I'll leave it in just so that everybody can laugh. So um, as I was saying, on the left hand side of your body, it's feminine emotional trauma. So for example, if Donna came to me and said to me, oh, Lucy, you know, my left hand hip or my left hand whatever is aching, I would immediately start asking some questions about the um, important females in Donna's life. And it might not be somebody who's alive today. So I just wanna throw that out there, okay? If you've got pain or if you've got recurring issues on one side of your body or the other, please just make a note, is it the right side or is it the left side? And see how resonant that feels to you. So from my perspective, I've broken my collarbone on the right hand side twice. I've broken my this bone here twice. I've broken this bone here. It's been pinned back together. I broke it that badly. Um, I have scars and everything on my knee on this side. Literally everything that's ever gone wrong with me has been on the right hand side of my body. So what does that mean? I was carrying a lot of emotional trauma in regards to the divine masculine. Okay, and I'll be honest with you guys, all of my trauma that I have carried through my life so far has been predominantly from my dad. And then what I've done is I've pushed it forwards into my male relationships so my partnerships and, you know, my loving relationships and my friendships with men, you know, okay, there, there has been a little bit of female emotional trauma, you know, a, a couple of things that I've had to deal with, but predominantly it's been on the right hand side of my body, which is masculine. So I just would like to throw that out to you um, this evening, just so that you can make a note of that. Have a little feel into it. Think back to all of the bones that you've broken and, you know, or the, the issues that you've had. And I'm going to be as bold to say, even where mosquitoes bite you or you walk into the door, anything like that, it, it's all relating to either the divine feminine or the divine masculine. So that's top tip number one from Lucy this evening. So let's go back to Donna and your healing journey, babe. So you obviously met me and I was in a great mm -hmm. place when you met me. Um, I had done a lot of healing work on my body. I wasn't there completely, but I'd done a lot of healing work on my body and I was extremely, extremely vibrant. And I know when you met me, there was a little hesitation, although you trusted me and although you wanted yeah. to be around me, there was a little bit of hesitation at some of the things 
that I was sharing because it was like, I've been here, I've done this, I've tried this before, right? Mm, absolutely. Absolutely, babe. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I didn't even want to be there that evening. As you know, I, I only came along because there was a glass of wine promised to yeah. me at the end of it. You know, the only reason I was there. And interestingly enough, the very one of the very things that wasn't good for me was the alcohol um, that I was drinking. But interestingly enough, it was what enticed me to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is what's so interesting so for people that don't know me back then I used to run seminars in the Playboy Club in London so mm. it's a private members club and yes there were Playboy bunnies yeah, like, that's the irony the irony of what I was doing there and that's that's me to a T I like to be a little bit of a rebel I like to speak my truth I like to push boundaries um ever so slightly with things like that you know I wouldn't push a boundary um you know just just to prove a point but for me personally, it was very much about bringing the naughtiness of having to go out drinking because I was a corporate girl and bringing it into um, like bringing health into that environment. And what was so interesting, I will never forget, I was doing one of these seminars on a Tuesday night and um, Anthony Joshua was in there. That's right. I was there that night. <laughs> and it's and it's so. All... Oh, you never told me that. <laughs> <laughs> Diary. <laughs> Would you have got on the train down? <laughs> yes. I might have popped in with a package from the post office. It was fascinating. It was <laughs> for him to sign. I, I literally got so distracted, Donna, didn't I? I was talking, I went, yeah. Oh, Anthony Joshua. <laughs> literally, I was like, it's Anthony Joshua. Oh, it was absolutely brilliant. So um, yeah, it's like that's me to a T. I want to, or, or it was my desire back then at least, to normalize all women have hormone issues. Mm. I'll let you into a little secret. All men have hormone issues too, but they just don't talk about it. And it's a taboo subject, so we won't go there. I am the one that goes there. That's what I'm talking about. We must go there. We must empower ourselves. Like Donna laughs. Donna laughs at me because every conversation we have is a, at some point we talk about poo. At some point through the day, we talk yeah, about poo and our, and our toilet antics. And yeah. Donna laughs, don't you, these days? Because we've normalised it, Donna, haven't we? Yeah. There is no, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm frank, there's no shame between Donna and I. <laughs> no, no, there isn't. Oh. We've shared, shared too many hotel rooms for there to be. <laughs> also, bless your heart, you were obviously there after my blood transfusion. <sighs> so we've even shared that side of things which was pretty touch and go wasn't it so we've yeah, really been on big. a huge journey together um and this is this is why i think it's really important for us to talk about these subjects because there is nothing that's taboo i would really yeah. encourage you if you're not going to the toilet at least twice a day preferably if you're eating three times a day you should be going to the toilet three times a day i just want to manage your expectations if that's mm. not what's happening right now i would seriously seriously take a look at your diet there are so many people out there that believe their diet is fantastic when actually in reality they're, they're having too much sugar or they're having too much alcohol or something which is which is disrupting their gut. I'm not saying you can't have it. What I'm saying is, is it's disrupting your gut and we just need to pull that back in alignment so that you can move forwards. Absolutely. So Donna, after that little tangent that we just went on there. That's all right. <laughs> standard. Um, like so that. talk to me about... Um, you know, when you, because I remember the phone call, you called me up and you were like, ah, I just need, I just need your help. You know, uh, talk to me about what happened. What was, what was the point where you just said, look, Donna, stop messing about, like, just listen to what this person's got to say and actually take action. I think it was when I was literally waking up in the morning and um, literally waking up saying to myself, literally, and, I, and this is honestly hand on heart, one day I want to wake up and feel like Donna again. The, and I mean that truthfully. I remember just laying in bed in the morning and thinking, when will I feel like me again? Will I ever feel like me again? Because I don't feel like me. And, and I, I literally ask myself that question every morning I woke up. And I remember waking up like that probably two weeks after I'd met you. And I just thought, do you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out to that lady. You know, I'm going to reach out to that lady. I'm just going to ask her for some tips of what I can do. You know, where can I start? Yeah. Um, and that's that's the day I seriously, I remember laying in bed this particular morning. I remember crying my eyes out and just saying, I can't live like this. I don't want to be this person anymore. I want to be me again. You know, I want to feel like me. And I didn't. 
And what's so interesting is that day, I remember, I'll, I'll never forget the phone call. You were so assertive on the phone to me. Mm. You were like, just tell me what I need to do. I'm tired, I'm literally, I can't go yeah. on anymore. And I was like, wow, this woman has reached breaking point. Yeah, I had, literally, I and, had. And I think it's important for us to touch on that because most people reach breaking point, but they don't know where to go. They don't yeah, know what to do. Exactly. They don't need to reach out to, do they? There is a real, there's, you know, you don't want to go to your doctor because you're just going to get a pill or maybe, <laughs> you're, you know, oh, you've got mental health issues or you need, maybe you're depressed. And actually, this is why doing these conversations, like people watching this now will be like, oh my goodness, that's how I felt. And I'm so grateful that you've made me feel normal for feeling like that. Yeah. So Donna, what was, the, what was, if you could just give us maybe two or three things that really, really changed things up for you? Of course. So I took stock of what I was doing, first of all, because, you know, we do have this thing in our head. Oh, I'm doing all right. I eat fruit and veg. I'm doing all right. But I wasn't, you know, I was, I was. So the three things I started with were simple things that didn't cost a lot of money. I started to drink more water. I never drank water ever. I drank juice. I drank, I never drank fizzy pop, but I drank juice and I drank alcohol when I drank coffee. <laughs> Let's be honest, but I never drank water, hardly ever, unless I was hungover. Then I'd drink a lot of water because I, you know, I felt yes. crap. You know, <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, exactly. So, water was one of the first things I put in because I remember you saying to me, just drink some more water, babe, you know, build it up slowly. And, and I could not believe the difference just from putting that water in my body. It's how different I felt, how much more alert I felt. Yeah, always the first step that I that I coach everybody on is how much water are you drinking? So a top yes. tip, just before we move on to Donna's next one, is I recommend a litre of water for every 22 kilos you weigh. Okay, that's what I recommend. If you are not drinking any water right now, please do not think, oh my God, I weigh 80 kilos. I need to drink almost four liters. Start small and just keep upping it every day by a little bit more, okay? Really important because otherwise you'll get bloated and you won't like the way that you feel. So Donna, top tip number two. Top tip number two is move your frigging body every day. I don't care whether it's a walk, if it's a run, if it is dancing around your kitchen to your favorite music but move your body every day because the the difference that makes to your mental health you know let's forget the physical for now because the physical is a bonus right but moving your body every day the feeling you will have you know that the way your mind feels just from making that do having that movement Beautiful. is just incredible amazing incredible. so let's just let's just give a few tips on how you can move um because it's here we're in the northern hemisphere we are cold it is wet how can we move first and foremost get upstairs like run up your stairs use your stairs like literally to step up on if you live in a flat and i know um, donna lives in an apartment go and walk up and down the stairs a couple of times you do not need to get wet you can literally utilize the things that you've got um donna you give us a top tip oh right so um so when when we're allowed out in the real world, you know, don't take the tubes to the next stop. Get off two stops earlier on the tube and walk that distance. Perfect. You know, if you're going to work. I mean, I know at the moment we're not. You know, that's a, a real good tip. Or if you're in a house and you have a downstairs loo, don't bloody use it. <laughs> Every time you need the loo, walk up the stairs. I love that. I love that. And that's a really good recommendation. Maxine, how about you, babe? What would you recommend to just, just as a high level idea for people to exercise? Well, my first thing I do is I stretch in the morning before I do anything else because that, that seems to get... bottom in your face. Yes, that's <laughs> the one. It's ever since I saw your ass lady in those tight pants. Um, and more, I hasten to add. But yeah, if I stretch in the morning, then it doesn't feel like exercise if I go for a walk because I just do it naturally. Totally. But if I don't stretch in the morning, this is what I used to do. You see, I used to lay in bed and go, oh, I'll get up in a minute. And then sort of get myself up, drag my dressing gown on, hop along down to the kitchen and stand like that. But now because I stretch before I get out of bed, I'm morning. Yeah, annoy that. everybody in the house, go, oh God, mum's up. But it works. <laughs> yeah, because then if, if somebody says, oh, you know, do you fancy meeting me? Yeah, yeah, I'm out the door, shoes on, I'm ready. Love that. The other tip I will give you though, if you want to start going for a walk in the morning or a run or whatever you want to do, get your clothes ready the night before. 
Now, this is the big thing for me because I would lay in bed and go, oh, I don't even know where I put my shorts. Oh, I don't know where my trainers are. So I would get everything out. And I used to do this for the kids when they were younger. So my clothes that I need to wear to go out for that walk in the morning are by my bed. Yeah. My trainers are by the front door. So I've got no excuse whatsoever. And it sets my mind right then that I literally can get up, put those on, put my shoes on, I'm out the door. I haven't got to disturb anyone. Yeah. I haven't got to empty the shoebox out to find the other train that probably hasn't got a lace in because I've washed yeah. them. It. So That's everything. It. And it just, when you know that you can literally just get up and go out, then you do it. Yeah. Love that. Thank you, Maxine. That's a really good top tip. So Donna, what was the third thing? So we've had water, we've had movement. What was the third thing that you just really, that really resonated? Cook from fresh. Cook everything from fresh. You know, um, and and it doesn't have to be. Sorry for you. I, I, I can only think of a swear word, so I won't use it. Um, it doesn't have to be an ache. You know, a <laughs> big ache. It doesn't have to be. You know, and that's something you really taught me, Luce. You taught me about cooking. You know, cooking more than you need. Like if you're roasting up lots of veggies in the oven or whatever, cook more than you need. So you've got little pots of them in your fridge, so that on those days when you're like, mm, what can I have? You know, you can just pull out a little pot. You know, stick it stick it in the oven or whatever, cook it up with something else to yeah. bulk it out and you've got a beautiful meal. Cook everything from fresh, lots of fruit and veggies. Yeah, awesome. I love that. I love that so much. And it's, people will be like, well, how on earth is that healing? You know, I eat a lot of fruit and vegetables. I guarantee if I came into your house for a week, probably not even a week, I'd probably only need a couple of hours there. I would be able to find so much within that couple of hours that you would need to tweak to actually bring yourself in alignment because most of us are delusional yeah. just throwing it out there i'm very, very I was, definitely. Members, you know a lot of people are delusional you do not realize how much rubbish you are putting in your body how much stuff you are just grabbing so um again a little bit of an extension on donna's top tip get organized yeah absolutely. get organized food prep okay thanks donna that's really awesome um maxine babe what was the stuff that you took from Donna? Because obviously Donna, Donna was taking a lot of a, a lot of the information that I was giving her and sharing it in the group. I mean, me and you often did lives together, didn't we, Don? Yeah, we it did. Was brilliant. Yeah. What was the information that really resonated with you for you to be able to go on that additional healing journey, babe? Well, I think what it was with Donna was she was normal. You know, you see these people who say you've got to go out and do this and you've got to do that but they haven't got two kids who need feeding, they haven't got to go to the football match, they haven't washed, you know, they've got the hair all perfect. Donna came in from a run, hair all over the place, didn't care. And she said, I'm sweating, I haven't had a shower, I probably stink, but hey ho, let's do this live. And I went, that's who I need to listen to. Yeah. Because if she can admit, because we don't, we go, oh yes, I always look like this. No, I don't. I look like shite when I wake up in the morning. I wouldn't like anybody to see me, I'm horrendous, but I'm always smiling now. So that was the first thing, finding the right person yeah. to listen to. Yeah. And then when, you know, she was going through the symptoms that I'd had, I started to listen. She, she used a few words that you use. I started to listen a bit more and just implement a few changes, like they cook from fresh. Yeah. I hadn't cooked from fresh for years. I didn't like my kitchen. So one day I got it, went, we'll change the kitchen around. And that's all it took. So I just got extra space. And I went and treated myself some chopping boards. And I cooked fresh vegetables and roasted them. Yeah, and it was the best meal ever. Yeah. And I woke up the next day, I didn't have gut ache. I didn't have diarrhea and I wasn't constipated. Good job. So that's when I started pooing, yeah. when I met Donna. Yeah. And then obviously you came along and talked about the emotional trauma and it all made sense. Yeah. Because I wasn't like, I didn't wake up one morning and go, when am I coming back? I woke up one morning and went, when's the real me coming out? because I haven't lived the real me for so many years because I just conformed with what was going on. But mine was, my emotional trauma was control yeah. because I had to control too much and that affected my gut. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And when I started to let go, everything made sense. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot longer journey than that. I didn't wake I up one morning and go, everything's great, because no way. I mean, it's been, this is my fourth year now. Yeah. It's, it's but the just, last two it's have really been interesting to, to just talk about control because a lot of people yeah. don't actually recognize that they have an issue with control because and it may literally have been that your parents controlled you so now you're one way or the other 
you know, and, and unfortunately, this is how it shows up. And we must, must, must recognize these qualities in ourselves. You know, I, I'll never forget when Donna identified that, you know, she was controlling her daughter or she was being over, overpowering with her daughter. Mm -hmm. She literally had no clue, literally had no clue. And it was like almost like a light bulb had gone on. And it, fair play to Donna, she changed immediately. She changed immediately. You see, I had that with my daughter. Um, and then we switched roles. When I started to let go of the control, she became controlling. Of course. To the point where I went, I'm going to throttle her in a minute. She's getting on my nerves. Yeah. And I, I literally sat here laughing. She said, what are you laughing at? I went, I've just had a Lucy moment. She's just appeared in my head as she does most days. I'm controlling. And she went, well, you can be. I said, and so are you. I said, so shall we sit down and have a chat? And we did. We sat laughing about it. And I did so scenarios of when I used to be really really controlling um, and I got mine was from a mum she was very controlling um, and my dad was quite laid back and then my dad died and my mum became weak is the way I'd describe it because she didn't know what to do she couldn't control anyone anymore because I'd left home um, so I took over controlled and it carried on and then obviously my daughter saw that from me and she started doing it yeah, of course. and we still have issues between us but, but so much better what happens we are yeah. all a mirror and this is why we often see in other people what pisses us off you know? oh yeah oh oh this person doing this really pisses me off because actually it's what i do but rather yeah. than me identify it with myself actually i'm going to get irritated at you because it's you it's not, it can't possibly yeah. be me, can it? Yeah. And this is why so many people get triggered. So many people get angry. Mm -hmm. So many people have little hissy fits and disappear. And then they come back and they're like, well, I got really angry with you. And I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. You know, because and sometimes it takes them quite a while to come back and admit that because they're some still in that phase. Say, some people yeah. never admit it. Yeah. And that's okay. That's their path. That's their journey. But it takes a very, very, very brave person to wake up one day and say, OK, I have made myself sick. Mm -hmm. Because I don't care what you've got, whether it's fibromyalgia or anything like that, you have created it in yourself. Unknowingly, admittedly, but you have. And this is the point that the human race needs to get to, to recognize we can self-heal. We have all of these absolutely amazing qualities. And that's really why I wanted to talk about this subject this evening, because three different ladies, three different perspectives, three different journeys. OK, there's similarities with hormones and gut, but, you know, we've all been through different traumas in our life. And mm. the fundamental truth of the matter is my top tip is be honest with yourself. None Can I just say one thing there? Yeah. You know, you were saying, um, like some people, they, they do, they know they've got something, they don't want to do something about it because they like that sympathy they're yeah, getting. Yeah. They like the drama. Yeah. But with me, when I was ill, whenever I got ill, I was really lucky because I knew I, I would heal. I just didn't know when I would find the right person to help me. Yeah. But I knew all along I wasn't going to die from any of those things due to obviously the, I think, the voices I think, in my head. I think what's really important here is, you know, just before we just before we really touch on people holding on to their sickness and their disease, it's very important that you are honest with yourself. You mm -hmm. must be honest with yourself. If your partner left you 10 years ago and it really stung back then, chances are it's still stinging on the inside. OK, it's probably still stinging on the inside. Now, some people like and Maxine just alluded to this. Some people will use that as an excuse to behave like an ass. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm sure we're all thinking of the same similar people at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. And a few more. <laughs> we all we all meet people that we're like, wow, like, why are you constantly focusing on it? Like what, what, what ad advantageous like move is that making on your life? But, and, and people can see that actually it's holding them back, but they can't see it in themselves. So let's start. I think the top tips, I think you get ladies have given some top tips this evening and let's just wrap it up with this this evening, because I think this is a topic that we need to come back to and revisit. Definitely. Let's wrap it up with this. If any of you out there have got anything going on with your health right now, 
please, please, please grab a piece of paper, grab your infamous journal. If you've been listening to me for a while, you should all have a journal. Go and write down what it is that is going on with your body that you're not quite comfortable with. Like, be really honest about it. Even if you don't like the way that your toenail gets brittle, um, you know, if you don't cut it often enough, whatever, write it all down on a piece of paper because it's getting it out of your body. Then have a little look. Is it the right-hand side of your body or the left-hand side of your body? Like, is there any commonalities there? Is there any patterns there? And then what I would really encourage each and every one of you to do is actually look at the last time that you made up an excuse because of one of those things. So for example, can't possibly go for a pizza tonight because if I eat pizza, my guts are gonna explode. That's an excuse, you know, like it's not, it's probably reality if you've got IBS or anything like that, probably yeah. a reality. However, I'd really like you to do that. Now, a lot of ladies out there will be thinking, oh, well, I used to make up excuses about my periods and Max, I resonate so, so much with heavy periods. You know, mm. and actually, ladies, maybe next week we should talk about bras and um, sanitary equipment just to go completely like that. It's been it's been yeah. on my mind for a couple of days. I need to talk about bras and the sanitary kind of stuff and just, you know, you know, stuff that us girls use because um, there is a lot of people that are sick because of the things that they're using. So I think that might be a good topic for us to have a, a cuppa over next week. Yeah. Um, but just on that. Ask yourself, when was the last time you made up an excuse? Oh, I can't go for a run because it's my period. Or, you know, I don't want my hair to get wet, for example. I would really like you guys to start looking at that and start getting a portfolio so that you then can see where you are comfort holding on, like Max was alluding to, holding on to that sickness or that dis-ease in your body. The only way you are going to heal this is by honesty and truth within yourself. The only way you are going to heal this is with, with self-love. So let's start here. I think this is a great place to start. Some of you are going to be having to write lots and lots of notes with all of the things that are going wrong with your body. And then next week, let's talk about um, either let's go on from here and we'll talk a little bit more about healing or let's come back to the bras and the sanitary stuff and, and that. Yeah. Because I think it's really important that we share the knowledge with, with people. Yeah. I appreciate it's not a very boy conversation, but it's um it's really important that we do actually show. Oh, it'll them. wake them up, won't it? Yeah, absolutely. Any boys, yeah. Absolutely. And we do because we don't talk yeah. about it enough. No. And you wouldn't and I know so many women who wouldn't talk about it in front of the husbands. No. And when they're actually on a period, they don't even talk to their husbands no. or their partner. No. They actually avoid seeing them on that week. Yeah. How can you live that? I can see for three weeks, but I can't see the last week of the month. Yeah. Ring me Tuesday, I might be safe. Yeah. What sort of life is that? No, it's not. And it's still yeah, happening. Yeah. So we need to get that out there. We need to normalise these things. You yeah. know, there are so many things that are impacting, unknowingly you're impacting your own health. And this yeah. is this is just something that I want to bring to the world, um, is just make sure that as many people are as safe as possible. And to any of the guys that are thinking, oh, I'll skip next week, think about it. If Ooh, you no. ever have a daughter, <laughs> you will need this information. Absolutely okay mm, absolutely. please 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 own that so um ladies it's my pleasure as absolute always to be here Loved with it. you this has been a lot more hot, uh, giggly than my other interviews today so thank you so much <laughs> They've been a bit heavy going. I've been down tunnels. I've been doing crazy stuff. So thank you so much, ladies. Um, oh, thank you for having it, us. Do not, do not forget to hit the subscribe button. And I will pop a cheeky little video above, maybe of our um, girly chat from last week. And we will see you all next week. Take see it easy. See you next week. Later. Bye. Bye.